welcome to Adaptation, where we talk about film adaptations and the original material they're based on, even ones that don't exist yet. <laughs> I'm Kendall Bryant, and I am doing another Dreamcast, the last one, in fact, before we sort of reset the year and do another Adaptations We Wish Existed video. This time I am actually doing my pick, More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, which just happens to be super appropriate for right now because Adam Silvera had two books that released this year, and one of them released just last week. The story of More Happy Than Not is another heavy one. I seem to pick those, or Nicole picks them and then I dreamcast them. Regardless, I end up talking to a camera about these very... <laughs> intense uh, storylines. Anyway, More Happy Than Not follows Aaron, who is a teenager growing up in the Bronx, who is not only dealing with the suicide of his father, but also his own recent suicide attempt. At the beginning of the book, he just is sort of getting back to himself with the help of his girlfriend Genevieve, when he meets a kid from the next neighborhood over named Thomas, and starts having more than friendly feelings for him. Unfortunately, his feelings for Thomas are not accepted by his community Community, and so he turns to the Liteo Institute, which erases memories, and he wants them to erase not only the painful memories, but also his feelings for Thomas. And sort of as an extension of those feelings, the knowledge that he is gay. His own knowledge that he's gay, which is kind of a big question of the book, so no spoilers, I'm leaving you there. But the subject matter is why I would like to see this book get a movie, because it deals with all these complex thoughts and feelings, and it's actually a little bit more twisty of a plot than you might expect, because it's combining this sort of sci-fi with a contemporary world. Of course, another reason I'd like to see it get a movie is because the cast would be predominantly actors of color, which I think we can all agree we need more of, and they would all be teenagers just starting out, so they would just shoot into, obviously it would be a brilliant movie and they would all shoot to fame and get in more movies. That's how it works. Of course we have to start with our main character Aaron, who is Latino and skinny, and Thomas calls him Stretch, so I assume that he's tall. Apparently we need more skinny Latino boys on screen because this was really hard for me to cast. I had a hard time finding him, and I think I was probably a little picky about, oh well he has to be skinny, you know, that was really important to me for reasons, I don't know, but it's my dream cast, so I get to be picky. And also just about him having the kind of look that I imagined in my head. But eventually I landed on Fabrizio Guido, who just happens to also be just 18, and you know I'm a stickler as much as I can be about casting the right age actor as well, so... That works for me. It's been four years since I saw him on screen in World War Z, and that might make it more of a, you know, riskier casting to lead a film, but I'm okay with that. Probably because it took me so long to find somebody that looked like Aaron did in my head, but my dream cast, remember? His girlfriend Genevieve is Dominican and has green eyes and dark hair. And because I only care about eye color when it's Harry Potter, that's not actually true, I just have bigger priorities sometimes. I've cast Becky G, who you probably know from the Power Rangers movie. Genevieve is an artist, and she's also pretty chill and go with the flow. And I personally think that Becky really shined in Power Rangers when her character started loosening up and feeling like more part of the team. So I think she could really do well with this, in addition to the more emotional slash emotionally supportive moments. Thomas describes himself as brown, which I completely missed the first time I read this, so I had a completely different picture in my head of this like blonde, curly haired, like flop of a guy. So it's a good thing that I reread the book and then reevaluated the way that he looked in my mind. He also happens to be described on multiple occasions as having thick or huge eyebrows, which is a really weird thing that I've never had to cast for before and didn't really cast for this time, honestly, because I was like, I guess those are big eyebrows, I don't know. So I ended up casting Lorenzo James Henry, who just happens to also have long hair, which I'm convinced that Thomas has for reasons I'm not really sure about. He's been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Fear of the Walking Dead, and I guess he has big eyebrows, I don't know. But what I was really looking for in this casting decision was somebody that I felt like was a bit of a chameleon, who you could look at and think, well, he could be a jock, or he could be a geek, or he could be a chill hippie dude, I don't know. Because I do think Thomas has that ability to just walk into a group of friends or meet a guy on the street and just instantly fit in with them. Okay, the next two casting choices are 
I think kind of spoilery. So if you've gotten this far and you haven't finished the book, then I really think that you might want to just stop now. I personally just wouldn't want to know that these characters were that important until you find out through the book. So I mean it's up to you if you don't care about spoilers, but my suggestion is to just go away now. Evangeline has green eyes and a tousled mess of red-orange hair. And guys, I am not casting any more redheads. I swear to God, I'm done. I'm sick of redheads. I wish I'd actually thought of this sooner because I did look through lists and lists of redheaded actresses that I've looked through a million times before for these castings because there is an abnormally large amount of redheads in literature. <sighs> Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. The point is that I did not cast Evangeline looking like she looked in the book. What was really important to me was that she had a sort of warmth that made you feel like you could talk to her, confide in her, and that she would be supportive and have your back. So I cast Journey Smollett Bell from Underground most recently, but she's also been in True Blood and Parenthood and Full House if you want to go that far back. And I definitely think she has the right kind of presence for Evangeline, even if she doesn't look like what the book describes. And last but not least, we have Colin, who is an almost jock. And I also wanted him to be somebody that you don't really like when you first get a look at him because Aaron sort of writes him off as, oh, this irresponsible idiot guy that I used to be friends with. Of course, eventually we need to be charmed by him, so I cast Dylan Sprayberry from Teen Wolf, which I don't actually watch. But I did watch a ton of interviews with him before I cast him just to make sure he was what I wanted, and I personally think he's got charm in spades and would be great for Colin. So there, my dream cast. What are you gonna do? Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Not just about him, but of course of all of these casting choices. Also get in touch with us on social media where we have all of those links down in the info section and check out our podcast on iTunes. Until next time, I hope your days are more happy than not.